Hey there, Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome to my stamp studio here in Eagle, Idaho. Today I have episode four of my Everyday Purse series for you. Some new ideas featuring this amazing die set that I love. We're going to be making purse cards. So we're taking this die that creates a purse and turning them into cards. I have purse shaped cards two ways and then also a card with a purse on it that has a peekaboo window with a little surprise on the inside, but it's not a card. All right, you just have to see it. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, I just wanted to take a look at some pattern papers that I pulled out to use for today's cards. I didn't end up using all of them, but I love these leather looking papers. And also florals are great for this time of year, great for a Mother's Day purse or card, and then the classic black and white stripes. So for my first card, I will die cut two purse pieces just as I normally would. This is the first way that you can turn this purse into a card. But first, let me show you real quick how you would turn this into a purse. So put the side that you want face down, overlap them and glue them at the center point. Then you're gonna fold up those flaps on the end and glue them on the end little adhesive flaps, the flaps for adhesive but we don't need that. So we're gonna remove one from one purse. And then on the second one, we're just gonna remove the side flap. And then we can fold that up and that will become the hinge for our card. I found that the hinge was just a little bit too big. So what I did is I took my double stick tape and ran it next to the score line, but still on that flap. And then I just took my scissors and cut along that score tape there. And then I have a smaller hinge. So I'll line up the two purses and close the hinge on the back side of my now purse card. You could also put the hinge on the inside, just depends on how you wanna make yours. I'm gonna die cut all the little embellishment accessory pieces for my purse. I'm using this really golden yellow color and some black glitter cardstock, cause yeah, yummy, love it. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and glue all of these pieces on. I will show you one side of the gluing and the other side of the purse, I'm doing the same. I did go ahead and die cut two purse handles, but in the end, I felt that I liked my purse card with just the front handle on it. So I only ended up using one. You could play with it and do whatever you like best, or um, you know, purse by purse, maybe one purse has both. So here you'll see I am using liquid glue. Um, later on, uh, on the final purse, I had enough. Like, it is kind of hard gluing stuff to glittered cardstock and foil cardstock. It takes time um, and it can be hard to line it up because it wants to scoot around really easily like that. Yeah. So I ended up using some of the score tape. But I also really wanted the, like the handles to stick on my purse. So you'll see this later. I actually use some score tape and liquid glue to adhere them. But if you are gonna use liquid glue, I like the use of little clips just like this to hold them in place while I'm working on the next thing. All right, so that, pretty much completes all the embellishments on this purse. I wanted to add something on the inside because it is patterned paper so that I could write on it. So I die cut a circle, um, but I only die cut about three fourths of it and I let the other half of the die hang off the edge of the paper so it was flat. And then I could put the flat end at the fold of the purse. So that's where we're gonna stamp our sentiment and we can write. Now I have this uh, closure strap, but it's just, um, for looks because it's not an actual purse. So I went ahead and just cut that off so it was flush with the top of the purse and now it's just decorative. All right, for the little tag, I die cut some more of the pieces from the Everyday Purse Builder set and I'm layering them up. Now, when I die cut this little heart piece, of course I had this extra heart, so I'm using that on the inside of the purse for just a little added decorative element. All right, then for the strap, I'm gonna have the strap um, meet and overlap, 
but I want the overlapped piece to be in the back. So I turned that around and I'm gonna thread it through the jump ring on this purse. I never put the glue on the jump rings when I put this purse together so I can easily insert my little tags like that. All right, for the inside, we're gonna stamp a sentiment from the Everyday Purse Stamp Sets and it says, it's your day, treat yourself. So then on the other side, we better put a treat and I thought a movie gift card would be the perfect treat for this birthday girl. All right, I'm gonna use some journey glaze to fill in the heart, just to give it a little bit of shine. And that is it for this purse right here. So that's my very first purse card. I hope that you love it. The black with any color would look great. All right, so for purse number two, we have a six by six piece of cardstock. I folded it in half, and then I'm taking my crease tool to give it a nice crisp crease. I'm gonna line up that die so that the bottom cutting edge is at the fold. When you die cut this out, you'll notice that now we have a purse that opens and closes just like a card, and there was no need to die cut two. Now, why would you wanna die cut two? Why would you wanna do it the other way? Well, it's because if you have paper that's directional and you do it this way, then your pattern could be upside down on the back. So that's why I'm showing you two different ways to make this purse card. For the accents on this one, I found this denim paper at uh, the Dollar Tree. So I'm using that for the accents on my purse. And now for the little um, clasp at the top, I die, or I just fussy cut some little scraps and I'm sticking those at the center, and then I have these little circles I'm gonna stick on, but then I also saw I still had the center of my jump rings there, and I thought those would make really cute closures for this clasp, so I'm actually using those, and I think they're really super cute. Turned on the side like this, yeah. Love it. I like to put them on the back too, just for a complete look because this card will be opened and closed and they will be visible from the back. So putting those on right there. And then I have a little tag that I already stamped and die cut with the sentiment thank you on it. I'm using some light green cardstock to die cut the pieces I need for a tassel. Now these little pieces you'll need two of. One of them I'm gluing the ends together to make a loop and I will then glue that to the solid end of this tassel piece, and then we can just start rolling it up. Now I did use my crease tool to give this a little curve before I did this rolling, and that made it so much easier. And then we can roll this all the way around and look how cute this thing is. It's adorable. Now that second piece is just gonna be like the finishing touch. So I'm creasing or using my crease tool to round that so it curves around the top of this much easier. I'll go all the way around and just pinch that for a minute to hold it in place and snip off the excess. And that detail around the top just makes this tassel. All right, so I'm just fluffing it up so it looks like a real one. And then I decided to stamp the word girl in blue ink near the bottom of that tag just for a little extra something. And then I'm gonna tie this on with some twine and I'm just threading it into that jump ring again and tying a little bow. I'm not gonna lie, this bow did not wanna cooperate with me today. I'm sure that's never happened to you, but you know, it happens to me all the time. So I just had to go with it. That bow is what it is. Now with this card, you might have to trim off your little corner pieces if they overlap each other. You can see I added some gemstones there to finish off the front. And I wanted to hide this um, from the inside where those scrap pieces hang down, so I, I die cut another piece um, of the top strip of the purse to cover them up, and then just use an X-Acto knife to cut away those little extras hanging down, and that finishes up purse card number two. Super cute. All right, now we're gonna move on to creating a purse that goes on the front of a card. This card is going to have a window. Oh, here I'm showing you how these purses fit into a standard A2 size envelope easily. Your handle might get pushed flat if you send it in the mail. All right, so now let's make the purse for the card that's gonna have a peekaboo window with a surprise in it. So we're just cutting a single layer here 
not folded over. It's just a single layer purse, but we just need that front. And then this is going to be the pocket slash window of the purse. I thought I would die cut this little um, rounded slit and that would be perfect for this opening. Ended up that I didn't really need it, but um, I'm just showing you in case it's something you wanted to add to yours. And then when I die cut this, you want to only partially die cut it. So your top plate needs to come up a little bit above the bottom edge. We don't want to cut a circle into it. We want to cut a pocket or a window. So you'll see here that I am able to open this and it's not cut away from the purse. So I lined up my ruler there and folded this back to make the crease line. And there you can see the little pocket. I'm going to put some um, double stick tape all the way around this. Um, it's really a window. It's like a peekaboo window. And I'm going to be covering it with a window sheet. But I realized I didn't want to cover it just yet because I need to trace that opening onto my card front. And my card front I am stamping out with this amazing background stamp from Concord and Ninth. It's like herringbone flooring. I love it. So I went ahead and double stamped that with Honey Drizzle ink from Altenew, just to intensify that color so it matches the color of the flowers in that purse. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is put temporary adhesive, put this on my card front where it would go when I'm done. I'm using a stylus tool to trace that window. That way I can see where that window is gonna be from the front side of my card front and the back side of this piece. So I'll remove that and show you right here. You can see it from the back, which is important for the next step. I'm going to bring in a die set from My Favorite Things. These are the Rip Strip, I believe that's the name, die set. So this is going to give us access to the pocket on our card. So I'm just using that traced window opening to figure out where to put my rip strip and I'm die cutting it from the back because that's the finished side and that's where we want it to look its best. The front side will be covered up. So I am putting money in my little pocket and um, I am folding it up into fourths so that it will fit in there. Covering up that opening and making it a window and then using my double stick tape kind of like you're creating a shaker card we want this lifted up and we want it to um, hold the money in place but we also want it to make this purse secure and not too flimsy on the front of our card because it is pattern paper and not cardstock so i'll go ahead and use that money as a reference and make sure I am leaving plenty of room for it and not taking up the space that it needs. One more piece should finish this off. When I want to cut my um, foam tape into strips, I often use the edge of my foam adhesive squares. And there we go, we have our little reservoir for our cache. But before we stick it down, we need to die cut all the things to embellish this purse. So I'm using gold cardstock and I am using some of that leather paper. So cool for the accents. I thought the brown would go really nice with this purse. Okay, so now I've laid my card front onto my card base. This card measures five and a half, or five by five, sorry, and using a pencil mark to kind of mark where that rip strip is so I can lay this rectangle die onto my card base. And that will give us access to the rip strip from the inside of the card. So I die cut that, it's like a window into my card base. And when I glue this card front on, I wanna make sure not to get any glue on that rip strip. So I glue that onto my card base and then erase those pencil marks. And then when I open that card, I will be able to access the rip strip. So I just put temporary adhesive to hold that dollar bill down. And when I laid the purse down, I realized my handle was gonna stick up too far. So you'll need to shorten the handle for a five by five card about an inch short. So I reattach that. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp a tag for this purse. And it says a little something for the birthday girl. I'm using that leather paper and embossing it with white powder for a super cool matchy matchy tag. I love it. And we'll die cut that with the coordinating die and tie it to the purse with some twine. 
and that's the purse. It's ready to go. We'll trim off those ends and go ahead and remove the adhesive backing and that way we can attach this to our purse. We're just gonna make sure we center this purse up on the card from side to side and have it about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom of that card front. There you can see it opens and we have the rip strip. Now I had to peel this up a little bit because it overlapped my foam tape a little. So I just pressed on that several times to kind of um, help the adhesive be less tacky so the person could easily rip it up. Now for my little closures, I don't need any extra paper to adhere them. I just use foam squares and stuck them down right to the card front. I'm using a sticker here. I wanted to stamp the word hi from the stamp set. It was too hard to stamp with the handle already there. So I found these stickers that I had on hand and put that there in that handle space. Today is the day. And then I used another one for the inside that says with huge love, which meant I really needed a heart stamped in there. So I took the heart from the coordinating stamp set and stamped it right above my sentiment. And that finishes off this card with the little window. Now, if you don't have the rip strip, you could just omit doing the window sheet and then somebody could take the money out right from that pocket. So those are the three cards. I hope that you're inspired to use this die in a different way and make some super cute things with your everyday purse die. On this next screen, you'll see another video featuring the everyday purse stamp and die set, as well as another video using that rip strip that you might be interested in. Thank you so much for stopping by. Feel free to subscribe if you're new here. I'll be back again soon with some more videos. Bye.